We want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, the name of His only begotten Son, who the word ignorantly called Jesus the Christ, whose name in the Paleo Hebrew is Hamashiach Yahweh Brother Lamak of the of the Service Assembly. Here's another spiritual uh, spiritual exhortation. Right, it's called. Uh, I named this lesson. Uh, Keep your lamps lit, right? Because in these last days, as things become rough, man. Um, you know, you may have family issues, children, uh, different things may be going wrong in your life, um, and you're trying to push through the push through the um, push through the evil, you know, that's going on, and uh, the daughter of Babylon and these other nations and all these different things that's happening in the world. Um, you know, we as we as men and daughters, men of the Lord and daughters of Zion. We need spiritual exhortation in these last days, right? So uh, first we're gonna first we're gonna go into the book of Second Edges, chapter six and verse thirty-seven. Let me know when you get there. Second Edges, chapter six and verse thirty-seven. down right so this is the book of second edges chapter 6 and verse 37 for my spirit was greatly set on fire and my soul was in distress right so when your soul is in distress you have to make sure that your spirit is on fire right your spirit had try to make sure that your spirit is always on fire man if you're not doing anything but just reading a couple of chapters a day um if you're not calling and talking with brothers Throughout the day, and you know, kind of seeing where their spirit is. If it's a few precepts you can give them, um, or if another brother may have a precept to give you to get you through the day, right? You know, so you want to make sure that you know when you're at work, um, you know, you got 10 or 15 minute break, you stop, read you a couple of precepts. Um, you know, the so called white man might take a little, little bit of that yoke off you. Throughout the day or, you know, whenever you got a, a few spare moments, you know, thank the most. I pray to the most high in these last days, right? So from there, we're going to go into the book of Daniel, chapter 6 and verse 10. Everybody that's it, Connor. Kind of. Right? Because in these last days, you gotta, you know, you gotta always exhort yourself, try to exhort your brothers, um, exhort your exhort the women, the daughters of Zion in these last days. Every little bit counts, right? So I'm gonna we're gonna give you a few instances of a person exhorting themselves in these last days, a person boosting up their spirit, right? These are a few uh, of the prophets, right? So we're going to start with the prophet Daniel. It's the book of Daniel, chapter 6 and verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before, before his God, Yahweh, as he did a four time, right? So that's another way to get your spirits up. You know, get down and set up a, um, a set schedule, you know, where you can sit down and you can pray. Um, you can, um, you know, a quiet place in the house, maybe the closet, wherever, where you can have a deep meditation that you can get closer and closer to the most high through the spirit, right? Because in these days, this is the stuff that we need, right? So Daniel, the prophet Daniel, prayed three times a day facing where? He's facing towards Jerusalem. Why? Because that's the holy land. That's where uh, that's where the mount is, the most high's mount, which is called Zion. Right? So from there, we're going to get 
and we're not going to move too fast, right? We're going to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 119, and verse 15. Psalm chapter 119 and verse 15. And it reads, I will meditate in thy precepts, and I will delight myself in the statues, and I will not forget thy word, right? So yeah, you have to meditate in these precepts, man. You got to go through the book. You got to go precept upon precept. Start putting these things together. You know, and start boosting up your spirit in these last days. You know, you can't have too much idle time. Idle time destroys the mind. Idle time destroys the mind of, of, of the man and the woman. You start thinking about all kind of wickedness, right? All these different things. You miss a, we're born into wickedness. We're born into sin. We're born into so many things that we have to use these things for our advantage in order to keep ourselves in the right mode and in the right zone so that we could push forward and try to get the kingdom. You know, every day is a struggle. If it ain't family, you know, if it ain't your, your woman, if it ain't your husband, if it ain't many different things that can force you to force your, your, your a few of the candlesticks to go out, right? To uh, that you you gotta you gotta start you gotta rekindle them. These feast days, uh, well, uh, the uh, the feast of Pentecost is upon us. These days are used to what? To re-energize, to recharge your spirit in these last days. That's what they're for. The Most I said, "Gather together, ye gather together, O nation undesired," because He knew that we would need these times to gather together. Now we know some brothers, you know, and sisters financially or. Um, you know, as far as transportation and everything, they're not able to get from place to place. You may have different things going on with your family, you know, that you're not able to make it. But through the spirit, you know, we have to make sure that we gather together and that um, we use these days to recharge through the spirit. Right. So let's let's stay in Psalms 119 to get verse 69. Verse 69. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 119, and verse 69. It says, The proud have forged a, forged a lie against me, but I but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Now, what does the heart mean? The heart means the mind, right? So through thy precepts, you keep, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep the whole precepts with my mind. Now, who are the proud? These so-called white men, right? The so-called, these other nations, they're proud. They can pass us like dogs, right? And we, and we know this. So what? They're going to vex your spirit throughout the day. But by keeping your precepts, keeping the whole precepts with thy whole heart, with thy whole mind, is how you try to stay stable in this wicked world, right? So we're going to stay in Psalms 119 again. We're going to go to verse 104. It says, through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Because once you start knowing these precepts, you immediately have a problem with anything wicked. Immediately. You immediately have a problem. The minute you see something wicked and you know a precept to it, you know how to cut it. That's why the scripture says here, through thy precepts I get understanding. Now I see what's going on. I see the wickedness of, 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 of the earth, the people that's around. Noah saw the same thing before the end of, uh, the, uh, before the flood. The scriptures say he saw the wickedness of men. You understand that? That's men and women, children, right? He saw these things. The Most High, he'll open your eyes. 
And once you start going precept upon precept, you start reading the scriptures, you start going from Genesis to um, to uh, uh, the Apocrypha. And you go from the Apocrypha to the New Testament, and you, start, you sit back and you say, well, wow, I understand this verse because I know this precept. Right? So you put those precepts together. That's why the most I said, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. You know, you get agitated when you hear other people talk about Yahweh in a way that that's not described about him in the Bible. You get agitated when you hear people talk about your big brother, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, saying that these different things was going on and he was the so-called white man and he was the Caucasian or whatever. These things make you hate every false way. These false lies and accusations against um, against our kinsmen, our kinfolk, our Mashiach, our Shai, right? According to the flesh, right? So let's go ahead and let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 1, right? Because in these last days, you have to, you have to remember different things that's going on in the earth. You have to remember that you're not free. None of us are free yet. This is not our rest. We're still in captivity. Because you have a good job and you drive a nice car, whatever the case may be, does not mean that you're not in captivity. You got a lot of jakes on the street that think that because they may not be suffering as their brother or as their sister in their mind they're free yet the money doesn't have their faces on it you have to pay taxes on everything you pay taxes of the taxes you're not free in these last days and you have to remember that and stop being selfish because as a people we're all still in captivity right this is for your people this ain't just for you Right? So this is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 1. It says, A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Right? So a good name, leaving a good name in this earth is better than any any um, uh, spiritual or righteous ointment. Right? You know, any oils, any rich oils, man. A good name. Right? You're getting out, you, you, you're, you're on the highways and hedges, you're putting your forth, forth your best effort, you're doing things in righteousness. The, the Most High says, do not be a hypocrite in the sight of men. So you can't come to somebody talking this thing and then the next time they see you smoking a fat blunt, you got a pack of cigarettes of black and mild in your hand with a Colt 45 and on, you on the corner, damn, damn uh, uh, what they call cat calling women all day. You can't put those things together, right? And it says the day of one's death is better than the day of, of one's birth. Because when you come into this thing, what are you coming into? Nothing but hell. Wickedness. Slavery. Right? The minute the, minute the so-called black child comes into the earth, they're immediately fighting. It's an immediate fight. We don't come into this thing with, with, uh, with, with, bright, with a bright future. If the Most High, you know, grants us the mercy to have a semi-great future, it's still going to be a hard time. It's still going to be a hard time trying to get it. It's a hard time trying to make it. Every step is like stepping on a, on a pebble. Every time you try to move forward, there's always some kind of stumbling block. Because we're not, this is not our rest. This is not the rest of Jacob. The Most High said, uh, Esau is the end of, of, of everything and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So this is not our rest. This is Esau's rest. Because we didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments pursuant to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Which was the beginning because he said if we kept them, we wouldn't have to go through this thing. Right? So, reading on verse 2, it says it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that it for that is for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his will lay it to his mind, right? So it is better to go to the house of mourning. 
them to the house of feasting. Every single day, you got a smile on your face. You're running around like everything is good. You know, the most I say it is better to go to the house of mourning. It is better to think on. Now, that's not saying that you can't enjoy. You can't enjoy yourself. The most I says do not. Um, or roughly paraphrasing, do not deny yourself of the good thing. And that precept will be up there after I get through with this thing, right? So don't deny yourself of the good thing. The most I didn't say that the most I also speaks about still planting vineyards, right? Still um still, you know, marry your daughters off, right? Don't let this make don't let this make you a dull person. But at the end of the day, you gotta still be fugal. At the end of the day, you have to say, hey look. Let me think on what happened to my ancestors. Let me think on why we're in this situation, why we're in captivity, so that you can make yourself wiser. It's about being wise. It's not about being a, a, a very mean person. But when you know a lot of stuff, it'll make you a stern person. Do you understand? It'll make you a stern person. It'll make you an austere person like Hamashiach Yahawashah was. Right? The scriptures even speak on... When you have much wisdom, there's much grief that comes with that wisdom. It's a lot of grief, and it doesn't make you necessarily a mean person. You just you just kind of understand what's going on, and you really don't have the time for the foolishness. It's, it has nothing to do with anything like that. So the most I say it is better to go to the house of mourning, because when you go to the house of mourning, in turn you'll build wisdom, right? Right. It says, verse 3, it says, Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance of the mind is made better. Right? Because the sadder you are, the more you're gonna the more you're gonna focus on what you're not doing right. What could you be doing wrong? What could you be doing wrong that's that's causing you to have these certain situations going on in your life, right? When you're sad, you think. When you happy, you just you just honky dory. You happy go lucky. You happy. You're not thinking about nothing at the time. But when you go to the house of sadness, it increases your your your, your uh, antennas. You have a more keen mind. You're looking and, and paying attention to everything because everything is going is 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 important to you at the time, right? It says, "Ma read it again." It says, "Right." It says, "Be afflicted." Use mourning to humble your spirit because that's what it'll do. When you mourn, you'll you ever see um you may have a person that died in your family. You may have been you may have been all over the place. You may have been the most wicked individual in the world. You may have been a whoremonger, female whoremonger, male whoremonger, whatever the case may be. But when somebody close to you passes and you begin to mourn, what does it do? It makes you humble. You'll humble yourself down for that for that for that funeral or for that instance. For that instance, you focused on everything and you you're focusing on what you doing wrong in life because you just watched this life that was close to you leave the earth. The spirit of that body leave the earth and go back to the third heaven, where it came from. Yeah, how about your meow with shot? Right. So that's why it says use use your affliction, use the affliction to to use your mourning in turn so it'll humble yourself. It says sorrow is better than laughter because through sadness it makes the mind grow. You become wiser. You know. The more you go through things, the wiser you, you're going to get. That's basically where that's going, right? Let's get verse 4. It says, the heart of the wise, so the mind of the wise is in the house of mourning. So if you're, if, if, if you're, if you're thinking about your affliction and different things that's going on, the Mosai says um, that the wise, when you're a wise person, that's where you keep your heart at. You don't keep, you don't keep your, your mind on... On, 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 on everything of the earth Remember uh, Solomon said that Just about everything on this earth Is vexation of the spirit Right Now again that's not saying Don't don't enjoy yourself But it's saying Have a stable mind 
you'll you'll find a lot of brothers and sisters that's in this truth. Even though we're having a good time, we are still watching. Everything is everything is what it is. Still, you know what I mean. And we can we can automatically we can snap back and get right back into that mode. So it, but we're not we're not. Um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, Israel? We're not um, we're not naive of what's going on, right? You got you know Jake naive. Jake Jake just think everything is just. You know, he just out having a good time and he dancing, all of a boom, 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 boom. And then, you know, he shot up because he's naive, right? You know, when you come into this thing and you go to the house of mourning and you you really realize who you are as a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Seminole, Indian, these things will in turn make you wiser when you go into the house of mourning, so to speak, right? So let me get... Um, we read this, it says, the mind of the wise is in the house of mirth. I mean, in the house of mourning. Right? It's a, it's, it's a, it says, um, verse, let me read, let me finish verse 4. It says, the mind of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of the fool is in the house of mirth. Just like I just said. When you out here jumping around like crisscross all day long, and you're not focusing, man. You, you become a fool, man. You know, you, you don't, you don't have nothing. You don't, you're not standing on nothing. You don't know the commandments. You don't study. You're not doing anything that's going to keep you grounded. You know, the the, the 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 wise person is a grounded person, right? You know, so you can't constantly be in the house of mirth, right? So let's go to. Um, Okay, let's go to the book of Isaiah 24 and verse 7, man. Because what is the house of mirth? What is he talk? What is what is uh, Solomon talking about? Let's get some proof on that, Israel. Prophet Isaiah, right? It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 24 and verse 7. It says, The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry hearted do sigh. Verse 8. It says, The mirth of tabrets ceaseth, the noise of them that rejoice endeth, and the joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink wine with a strong with, with with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it, right? So this is going into um this is going into you know the end of this thing. You know, Jacob's trouble and everything else, man. You know, in that day, the person they used to sing and all the songs you used to hear and all those different things, the the mind the, the mind of the, all the good strong wine. All of that stuff is going to taste nasty in that day. It says the new wine morning. You just got through fermenting this wine and all this new this new wine. You know, um, it's going to mourn. It. it says the merry the merry hearted are going to sigh in that day. It says the mirth of the tabrets, which um, which I believe those are your uh, your tambourines, right? It says the mirth of the tabrets ceases. it. The noise of them that rejoice ended, and the joy of the heart ceased. So all these different things that you enjoying, all this mirth, and you you go into the video, you're trying to go see Cardi B, you're trying to go see Rick Ross uh, car show, you're doing all these different things, and that day all, all that mirth is gonna go. It's not you're not gonna be able to do that thing. You ain't gonna be able to hit the gas station and go ride and go do whatever you want to do and trick off and, and, and be a beast beast in the earth. You're not going to be able to do that, right? So that's why the scripture says better to go to the house of mourning than the house of mirth, right? Keep reading. Verse, verse, we'll start back at verse 9. It says, they shall not drink wine um, with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion 
is broken down. Now, what's the city of confusion? That's the United States of America. It says every house is shut up. That do that do man come in? That do that no man may come in. Right? You're not going to be able to just go inside. Everybody going to be shutting their doors. All hell going to be breaking loose. It says there is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. So what's that mirth? Right? It says in the, in the city is left desolation. And the gate is smitten with destruction. Right? So that's that mirth. All that mirth is going is to go in that day. Right? So let's jump from there. Let's get to the, the book of Luke chapter 12 and verse 35. Right? Luke chapter 12 and verse 35. Hopefully I ain't moving too fast, Israel. <clears throat> right, so we got to stay prepared in these last days, man. The Mosai is expecting us to be prepared. Right, the most I is expecting us to be able to, um, you know, be able to keep these feast days and and learn from them and use them for when we pilgrims on the earth, you know, Lord willing, right? And the most I is protecting us, man. We're gonna need these these tabernacles and different things that we're doing, these fasting and stuff like that, because you may not be able to eat for five or six days, seven or eight, eight days. It just depends. But the most I is gonna be with you, right? So this is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and we'll start at verse 36. No, we'll start at verse 35. It says, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning, right? So what? When you gird your loins, you're, 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 you're preparing for war. So, you know, you have to gird your loins. You have to be prepared for what's coming. You can't just we can't just keep walking around here thinking that everything is going to stay the same. We just read in the book of Isaiah that the storehouses are going to be closed. Doors, people that would open their door for you are not going to open in that day for what? All hell breaking! I'm not opening the door neither. You know, the scriptures are uh, the book of uh, Judges chapter five speaks on that as well, right? It says in. in it says, let your loins be girded and your lights burning. Now, what's your light? That's the law, statutes, and commandments, man. Right? That's your spirit. Your spirit is a light. The law is light. You have to keep your spirit burning in these, in, in these last days, right? It says, verse 36, it says, And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for the Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, it, they may open unto him immediately, right? Because if you keep your spirit in the Lord, you keep your spirit on prophecy, you keep your spirit on studying, you're wearing your fringes, right? You're going out there teaching, you know, when you can, you're doing it to the best of your ability. You're doing lessons, right? You're exhorting people. You, you're, you're not hating your brother or your sister. You're being a good woman, Proverbs 31. You're doing it to the best of your ability. You being you being um you got patience with your brother and sister, right? It says, and ye yourself see, as long as you keep your loins girded and keep your lights burning, this is what Yahweh Shah is saying. This red letter. He says, and you yourselves like unto men that wait for the Lord when he will return from the wedding. With the bridegroom, Mashak Yahweh Shah. That when he cometh knocking, when the most high knock at your door. They may open unto him immediately. Because you know you've been doing everything you had to do. You open that door as soon as he knock. You waiting. You see out there? You gonna open the door because you know that you what? You, 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 kept your, you kept your mind in the house of mourning. Right? You kept meditation. It's always, it's gonna go all the way back. You study thy precepts. You gain understanding. These are all things that's going to prepare you for when Hamashiach, Yahawashiach come knocking on that door. You're going to want to hurry up and open that door because you know you've been doing any, everything that you possibly can um, through the Spirit. Right? 
It says, blessed are those servants, no pun intended, whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. The Mosas gives you an order to watch. Look at what's going on around you. Don't be have your eyes closed. It's a lot of, you know, a lot of people that's not woke. Their eyes are closed. They still sleep. You can tell them a thousand times. Was that Chicken Little, that movie that came out a while back? With that chicken running around? Yeah, trying to, the sky's falling. The sky's falling. Hey, look at that, man. Get out of here, Chicken Little. You don't know what's going on. Right? Um, no, it's finna rain. It's, man, no, you know doggone well. It ain't never rain. What's rain? You mocking the men of the Lord. You're mocking the warning. But the Most High, He commands us to watch. So when we going into these uh, these end time headlines and um, these um, mayhem Mondays and different things like that, we're doing the commandment of the Lord. The Most High commanded us to watch and gird your loins up and prepare. There's nothing wrong with going and getting you some campus supplies. Don't let brothers tell you don't get no campus supplies. That's silly. You know, uh, uh, faith without works is dead. That's on the physical. Uh, that's on the physical situation too. You did nothing to prepare yourself for this day. You thinking as long as you just sit around and, and, and you waiting on the Most High, He just gonna come and hand you something? No. Did the Most High come and hand you the truth? No. Is He is He handing you the keys to the kingdom? No. You still gotta work. So what? So if when you don't go and prepare for these days, when you don't try to get you a camper van or RV, something, anything that can prepare yourself for when you got to get up and move, or you may have to move your family, you're doing your family a disservice. Y'all just sitting around waiting for all hell to break loose, and for Esau to kick your door in, rape your daughter, and do all manner of wickedness in your house. That's all you're waiting for, because that's what's coming to those that's not in this truth. That's what's coming to those that. Curse the men of the Lord out when they're trying to teach them the word. Call them everything except for a child of God. You know, you don't want to listen. You don't want to hearken. These are the things that's going to happen. Right? It says, verse 36, it says, 38, it says, And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, so and find them so, blessed are those servants, man. Because you don't know when he comes. He could come in the first watch, the second watch, the third watch. But, but what did the Most High command you to do? What did Yahweh Shah command give you that commandment from Yahweh? He said, "Watch, prepare." Right? These these are different ways to keep your keep your candle lit. If you're not watching, then your candle's gonna go out. That's like anything when you lose. Um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, uh, sister? When you when you lose. Interest in something. Is you going to want to do something after you lose interest in it? You see what I'm saying? So that's the same thing in this truth. That's keeping your, your candle lit. If you stay in the book, you're going to continue to become interested in it. You're going to be like, wow, I didn't know that was in there. Oh, wow, I didn't know this. And you're going to keep continue to keep that candle lit. Uh, you know, without being so excessive, uh, Israel. So we're going to go back we're going to go, go to, um, let's get James chapter 2 and verse 18. I mean, this is exactly what I what I just went into. Now, again, James is the brother of Hamashiach Yahawashai. I'm willing to listen to James, man, just about before I listen to anybody. Because James was in a room with Yahawashai, day in and day out. Eating dinner and lunch and everything else. Okay? okay? So that that word, just about what James say, it came from the horse's mouth, right? So let's get the book of James chapter 2 and verse 18, right? This is the precept here. It's the book of James chapter 2 and verse 18. It says, Yea, a man may say that thou hast faith, and I have and I have works. Show me thy face, thy faith without thy works, and I will show you that show thee my faith.
by my works. So you can't sit up and talking about, man, don't prepare. Don't gird your loins up. Don't let your light shine. Just, just wait for the most high. Don't purchase no water. Don't purchase no rice and beans where you, you may, you know what I'm saying, need something to eat, man. But what, did, what did the mighty brother of Yahweh James say? He said, yea, a man, a man may say that he has faith and I have works. So man, you, anybody can say that. Man, I got faith and I got works, right? He says, show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show you my faith by my works. You got to do something. You can't think that thing, something is going to come to you. It ain't It ain't came to you yet. So what makes you think it's going to come to you now? Right? And, uh, you know, brothers, hey, man, write these precepts down, man. And come back to this lesson because you're going to need it in this last day, man. Right? So we're going to go, we're going to jump back. We're going to go to the book of 2 Kings, verse 6, verse uh, 2 Kings 20 and 16, Baba Kashak. Kings 20 and verse 16. Because this is this is a this is a a, a, a clear this is a clear image of of what faith looks like. A, a lot of us say we got faith, man, but we ain't really got no faith. You got, you got, you got to be willing to lose something. The most I like to see that thing in blood a lot of times, man. You know what I mean? You got to be able to lose something. You're gonna lose family members, man. You're gonna lose a lot of things once you, once you get into this faith. It just, it just, it comes with, it comes with it. The most I want to see how much you love him. Because you're going to have to lose some of them people, man. Right? This is the book of 2 Kings, chapter 1, and verse 16. This is a classic, right? It says, And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, so this king Hezekiah, he says, Hear the word of the Lord. So Hamashiach, uh, Yahweh, by Shem Shah, gave a word down to Isaac, right? And Isaac is talking to Hezekiah. Behold, the days come that that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in the store until this day shall be carried into Babylon nothing shall be left saith the Lord so the, you know Isaiah is given a prophecy that was given to him by Yahweh saying hey you the king now but it's going to come a time where everything in your house your children everything you've got because the, the house is your bloodline. So he's talking about your bloodline and he's talking about the things that's in your physical house. Right? It's going to be carried away into Babylon during the Babylonian captivity. It reads, Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in the storehouse unto this day shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget. So he ain't even had these children yet. But he's saying the children that you're going to have. He ain't even had them yet. Right? He says that you shall beget. Shall they, shall they take away. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Right? So what's a unit? A unit, a unit, a man, a man can be, he can choose to be a unit by not having sex. A man can also be made a unit by another man. Which means they can have their rod cut off. Right? Or some men are born units. For some kind of way they're born where they can't use it, right? So that's what a eunuch is. So he's telling him that their sons, that King Hezekiah's son, are going to be made eunuchs by other men. And a lot of eunuchs are homosexual. And the king will have them around. They have feminine tendencies. They walk around kind of like a woman. Um, 
if you remember uh, when um, uh, the Israelite Benjamite Esther, which were, was queen of Persia, when she married the Persian king, if you watch any of the movies, you'll see that um, she had a eunuch with her. And that eunuch made sure she got to have, you know, was taken care of and, and put the, the good smelling perfume on for the king and all these different things and made sure she washed and all those different things that was prepared to meet the king. And they had a feminine, they have a feminine essence about them, right? They don't mind them being around the women because they can't have sex with them. Okay? All right. So it says, so he's basically giving King Hezekiah a doomsday prophecy right now. He says, he says, then, then said Hezekiah unto Isaiah, good is the word of the Lord. Which thou hast spoken. And he said, Is it not good if peace and truth be in my days? So he just gave this man a doomsday prophecy, and he still had faith in the most high God, Yahweh. He chose me to do this with? He could have it. He could have anything that I have. That's the kind of faith. That brothers say they have, but do you really have that faith? Right? It says the faith of a mustard seed can move mountains. So these these men had that kind of faith. Right? So let's get um let's jump from there. Let's get Job, Job chapter 2 and 10. Right? Because you're going to go through hard times in this walk, but you got to keep your candles lit. You got to keep your fire burning. There's going to be some times in this thing where you're going to be like, man, I don't know if I can make it in this truth. I, re I really just don't know, man, but I I'm just going through the motions, right? So let me get... Let's get the book of Job. Chapter 2. Chapter two, chapter uh, Job, chapter two and ten. Another thing we gotta remember about the Most High is the Most High ain't no one trick pony. The Most High controls everything. He controls anything that we go through. The Most High will kill you straight like that, and he'll wake you up straight like that. He'll bring you from nothing and he'll make you something just like that. It's a small thing for the Most High. Right, so let me get the book of Job, chapter 2 and verse 10. Everybody got to say calm. Calm. Right, this is the book of Job, chapter 2 and verse 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women. Right? Speaketh what? What shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips? Right? Because Job's wife told her, man, just told him, hey, look, man, forget the Lord, man. You ain't do nothing wrong, and now you're going through all of this. But Job said, you speak like one of the foolish women. So that let you know that even in that day, you had women that were just foolish around him. That just, you know, just saying things all out of their mouth, right? But, but what we're speaking on right now is the hardships that you're going to go through in this truth. You think the Most High just only could do good, he can't do no evil? I don't want to. I don't want to worship somebody that's a one-trick pony. I want the more. I want. Hey, I want to worship somebody that's ruled over everything, right? Because Esau, uh, 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 have you believed that Yahweh was fighting with the spiritual demon Satan, right? And Yahweh threw threw a right uppercut, but he missed him, and Satan kind of he kind of parried and hit him with a straight, laid him out. Yahweh was kind of coming too. You know what I mean? And, and and all of a sudden he saw a, a rope and he pulled it and it was a trap door and then Satan fell out of heaven and that's that's how look, Yahweh don't need no help from nobody to destroy Satan. He created Satan. He works for the most high. He does he didn't he didn't need for no trap door to open so Satan could drop on the earth. If he wanted them dead, he would be dead. 
The Most High is a, is a man of balance. Good and evil comes from the Most High, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai. Right? It says, kind. Right? So let's get, let's, let, let's get why the Most High is, is, is the way he is. Right? So let's get the book of Sirach, chapter 33 and 14. Now this is a powerful precept. The book of Sirach, chapter 33. And this is a very important precept that you always need to know. And brothers that's out there teaching, man, you make sure that you keep this precept in your holster. Because you're going to get a lot of Eve, a lot of older Eve that have been in church all their life. And they say, well, not my God. My God would never do that. My God is all love. He'll, he loves everything. Like the Most High ain't got a mind of his own. The Most High can do what he want to do. Right? Okay. You get this, say Okay. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 33 and verse 14. It says, good is set against evil. And life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly, right? Okay. So it just said good is set against evil and life against death, man. So in this world, you're going to have good and evil. That's the way the most I set the program up. It's set up like that, right? So when you're going through the, through the motions in this truth, you have to understand that you're going to go through hard times because it's set up like that from the beginning. These are the battles that we're going to have to face. Now, I know it's easier said than done, but we're going, we going precept upon precept. We're going by Shem Yahweh Shah. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. We're going thus saith the Lord. Because that's the way the Most High gave me and gave us the understanding, right? According to the Bible. Verse 14, I'm starting in the middle. It says, So is the godly against the sinner, and the sinner against the godly. So when you start keeping these commandments, you become godly to these people. And these people are sinners. They don't want to keep the commandments. So it's going to be a constant balance. It's going to be a constant clashing, just like Esau and Jacob. It's going to be a constant clashing. Cain and Abel, a constant clashing. One is on the left-hand side and one is on the right-hand side. That's just the way it is. Most of us set it up that way. Verse 15, so look upon all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, one against another. So what does that mean, the works of the Most High is two and two? Yeah. It's a balance. This is the most fire precept in here. I love this precept. I love it. The works of the Most High are two and two. One for me, one for you. You get what you deserve. You're evil, you're good. It ain't no in-between. These are two and two. You know? You're doing good one day, you're doing bad the other day. That's how the most high work. But where's your faith? You got to make sure your faith is in place. And these are different things. You have to keep your candles lit. You got to you gotta do certain things to stay in the, stay in the moment and stay in this fight, man. Because this... It's a hard fight, but you got to stay in this fight. No different you go to the boxing ring. You got to train to be able to maintain in that fight. The fight may be 12 rounds. You got to train for 15. So that you know you got 12 under your belt. So now you know that other three, hey, if I wanted to, I could do that. But I ain't got to because it's on a 12 round fight. Again, when you go back to it with... What did what did um what did Ecclesiastes uh, uh Salakia? What did Solomon say? You know what did Yahushua say? That was read letter in the Book of Luke. He said, "Gird your loins up." You got to gird. Got that means be prepared. Get prepared, right? When before we went to war, we used to wear something called uh, trousers or um, Salakia uh, breeches, right? And the breeches was loose. When you gird them up in the middle, they tied them up, that means they was ready for war. It's time to go fight. You know what I mean? So that's what it's about. Gird your loins up, man, in these last days, man, because this ain't our rest. This is not our rest. Now let's get that precept on um, the most high's works is two and two. Let's get Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 1. 
The most highest works is two and two, Israel. Oh, that, that ain't my God. Mama Essie, that ain't my God. With that big, ugly hat on, man. Ready to cuss you out. Ready to cuss you out over her God. Now, that ain't my God. But the scriptures say that both sides works are two and two. One for me, one for you. Let's get Proverbs chapter 11. Let's get the classic. It's the book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 1. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Okay? So what, what is the delight of, of Yahweh? Bashim Yahweh Shai? Balance. Balance. Two and two. That's how he rolled. You can take it how you like it. Two and two. The works of the Lord is two and two, Israel. Right? So let's get this Proverbs eleven and one. Let's get Job one and six then. Let me let me show you what's going on, man. And I just spoke on this, man. The works of the Lord is two and two. He runs everything. He runs this whole thing, Israel. Let's get Job 1 and 6. And if you already know these things, then enjoy, and, and, and enjoy rehearing. But if you don't know these things, Israel, this is something that you need to make sure that you write down and, um, and you make sure you keep this lesson. All right? The book of Job chapter 1. In verse 6. Get the classic. Let me show y'all how the most I get down. This is the book of Job. Chapter 1 and verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of Yahweh came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came along with them. So who are the sons of God? Those are his angels. Now who came with the angels? Satan. So it ain't no such thing as saying he over there by himself plotting against the Most High because he got power too. And he just waiting for the Most High to slip so he can catch him with that, that, that left hook last this next time because he missed him when the trap door opened. Everything on this earth has one God to answer to and that's Yahweh. So Satan is coming too to see what Yahweh wants him to do. He's not coming there to challenge Yahweh. He's trying to see what's going on. And look, Satan, Satan is very good at his work. He is very good. He don't have no off days. No, He doesn't have any uh, uh, off time. Okay? Vacation. He doesn't have that. He, he's not off on the Shabbat. Right? He's not off on your so-called wicked Sundays. He's out and about. Now let's prove that. The book of Job chapter 1 and 6. Now there was a day when the sons of Yahweh came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, when's coming down? So the Lord like, man, where you come from, man? Where you been at? You know what I'm saying? What up, dude? Where you been at, man? Where you been at, Satan? Now what's Satan say? What's Satan say? He said, then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Because that's his job. His job is to go to and fro, left and right, compass the earth, east, west, north, south, whatever latitude. Right? Whatever hemisphere, southern, northern, whatever you want to call it, believe in the globe, which is off, but hey, that's your thoughts, right? So at the end of the day, the Most High controls Satan and the angels. The Most High got angels for everything on the earth. Death angels, love angels, whatever, man. Lion angels, they go down and make, make everybody lie on you. In the book of Job, didn't, didn't Yahweh send a lion spirit down to the men of Shechem? Yep. And what was that, what was that, that, that lion spirit? Damn guile, man. Who 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 is who is Abimelech that we we may serve him? Ain't he Jeroboam's son? Man, we ain't serving that fool, man. God. Yeah. 
Yeah. As soon as soon as uh, 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 <laughs> and Gar ran into a bit of like, hey, and the, and the captain was like, there you go, find him. Then you just when you just talking about him. And he got jammed up, got ran out of the city. Come on now. So the most high controls all spirits on earth, right? So that was Job 1 and 6. Let's go back to the mighty book of uh, Psalms, to the Psalms of King David. So this, this, is, this, is, this is what you call reading what? Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 68, and I'll start at verse I'll start at verse 20. It says, He that is our God is the God of salvation, and unto God and unto God the Lord be, belong the issues from death. So death comes from the most high as well. Any kind of issue, any kind of sickness of death, any anything that you die from the most high know about it. Satan don't know about it before the Lord know about it. Stop thinking Satan got some kind of power. Say only only power God is say uh, power Satan got is the power that you give him. If you're a wicked Negro and you like to lay up with all kind of women, the most high, he's gonna put what? Say he's gonna use Satan to get you get you something that Ajax don't wipe off. You're a wicked Negro. If you're a wicked Eve and you like tricking men out of their money and jamming them up and going in their wallet while, while they sleep, the Most High will send Satan to make that man wake up in the middle of the night while you got your hand, your nasty fingers digging in his wallet and make him cut your damn throat off, man. You know, this is uncut, man. This is the truth. So the only power Satan has is what you already got a problem with anyway. It's, it's stuff that you deal with anyway. He uses it. And a lot of times that greed or whatever your, your issue is will cause your death. You got a need for speed? The most, <laughs> the most high will send Satan down there to make that damn bike turn over. Since you got a need for speed. Huh? You like to drink? You over drink? The most high, hey, he'll put a spirit, he'll put a spirit down there and make you wreck your car. You understand? So all of these things is of the most high. But he uses Satan because Satan is very, very intelligent on the left hand side. Right? To use what you already fighting to get you about this thing, man. It says, I'm gonna read it again, Psalm chapter 68, verse 20. He that is our God, which is Yahweh, so we know it's our God, it's possessive. He's talking about Israel. David is talking about Israel. Is the God of salvation for Israel. And unto God, the Lord, belong the issues of death, right? So let's get uh, Psalms 113. I'm going to stay in the book of Psalms. And I ain't in no big rush either, Israel, so this this ain't gonna be for the long haul. All right, it's the book of Psalms, chapter 113, and I'll start at verse 7. It says. I'll start at verse 6. It says, Who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? Verse 7. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill that he may set him with princes even with princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. So all these things that the Most High does, you know, is at his discretion. Right? The Most High controls whether you rich, poor, 
you're barren. Can you have kids? Can you not have kids? Because one thing too is you hear a lot of Eves on, on, on TikTok and whatever or all these different shows killing their children, talking about they don't want to have children and all these different things. That's how you know that this thing is almost over with. Because our women, it was death to them that they couldn't have children. Our sisters used to be like, hey, hey, if I don't have children, I'm just going to die. Because it was a rite of passage to give your husband a child. Now y'all want to run around acting crazy. Oh, I don't want no child. I'm good. That's your uh, that's your thing for the for the earth, Salakia. That's your position on earth. That's what you're here for. That's why the Most High gives you these different things. He gives you those insides to be able to bear those hips and all them different things that you like to show off the Jake at the damn strip club. Those things are, are what the Most High gave, so that you're able to bear children, man. You still here after having three and four children when to lose that much blood, a lot of people be dead at this time. But the most high, he give you the strength to do that thing as a woman or as a daughter of, of Zion. But y'all take that thing for granted, man. Man, the women back in the day would have killed themselves if they couldn't have a child. What did Sarah say? I'm barren. She was sick of it already. She went back and forth with her handmaid because her handmaid was able to have a child and she couldn't. That handmaid came up in there and she rubbed Ishmael all in her face. Because that was a gift of God if you could have a child. So y'all all that killing babies and all that, you're going to be put to death in these last days. All of you. All of you that do this thing. And y'all less of y'all less of women than the women that we had before. This thing is almost over with the most high. He wanna raise up righteous women in these last days. He wanna raise up righteous women in the kingdom again. He don't want none of all of that. Y'all carrying on the um y'all carrying on the um y'all carrying on the ways of the ostrich. Right? You got the lashes in, you're bald at the top, your behind sticking out in the back. You have eggs, you have babies, and then you leave the egg right there and walk off. That's what the ostrich do. The ostrich lay an egg and don't watch it. Ain't that our women? Kinda. You make a child and just leave it there. You all in the grocery store, the child all the way on aisle three, you on aisle uh, 29. You don't want them. That's why the most high, he, got, he, has, a, he has a judgment for you wicked Eve in his last days. Remember, it's more. It, hey, look at the statistics. The statistics: two thirds of our people have to go, and there's more women on this earth than men. So get it together. Get it together. All that. Nah, I don't need. I don't need this, and I don't need that. Right? Now let's jump from that. Let's get First Samuel two and eight. Book of First Samuel chapter two and verse eight. I'm trying not to rant because I could really start ranting this, bro. You already know that. Spirit convicts me. I must rant. Right? First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8. When you get it, say kind. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8. Kind. This is the book of First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8. And it reads. Matter of fact. Let's get, I'm going to start at verse 6. It's the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 6 says, The Lord kill it and make it alive. He bring it down to the grave and he bring it up. Right? So the grave is not hell. It's just the grave. Right? So the most out, he kills, man. And he make it alive. Now that's, a, that's on the physical and that's on the spiritual. The Most High, he brings forth life in the physical. But he will also kill you at the same time. Not Satan. Right? 
Now on the spiritual, on the spiritual uh, forefront, he give you the spirit. He give you this truth. He'll wake you up, right? He'll put the spirit in you to go out and teach and do the work of the Lord. But then he'll kill you too. He'll take it right away from you and kill that same spirit they gave. You. Which is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of separateness. Right? Okay. So he can kill you on the physical and the spiritual. What did the scriptures say? Don't, don't fear the man that can kill your physical. Fear the man that can kill your physical and your spiritual. And that, that comes from the Father, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, man. Right? It says, verse 7, it says, The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and he lifteth up. Verse 8, He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifted and lift up the beggar from the dunghill. Now what is dung? That's, that's, that's turds, man. That's waste. He'll bring you up from the, from the ish. The scripture just said in uh, the book of um, Salakia, uh, Psalms eleven, uh, Psalms one thirteen and verse seven, that he'll he'll bring you up from the dunghill, and he'll set you among princes and kings. This is hey look, all this is an easy thing for the Most High. It's not hard. It's an easy thing to do, man. Uh, let me keep reading. It says. To set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of Yahweh. Right? So what does he mean by that? A lot of a lot of us brothers came from the dunghill, man. A lot of us brothers was homeless on the street. Hell, criminals, rug rats, whatever, man. Scum buckets, wicked as hell. Whoremongers, same thing for you women, the same thing, all those things, same thing. What did the Most High do? What did he do? Because the book of uh, Salakia, I believe it's 2 Peter 2 and 3, the first Peter 2 and 3, it says that we are a nation of kings and priests. Right? Now what, did you, what does it say here? It says, he raiseth up the poor out of the dust. And lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. So he's going to make us kings. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. All of this belongs to the Most High. And he had set the world upon them. Who is them? Verse 9. He will keep the feet of his saints. And the wicked shall be silent, which is these other nations, Esau, for by strength shall no man prevail. Who is his saints? Israel. Israel. Let me get that. Now I got to get it. I wasn't even going to get it. Now I got to get it. I got to get it. I got to get the classic Israel. You know how I do. Get that thing real quick. Bear with me. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 148, and verse 14. It says, He also exalted the horn of his people, which is Hamashiach Yahawashah, the praise of all his saints. Even of the children of Israel, are people near unto him? Praise ye the Lord. So his saints is the children of Israel. I had to get that classic, y'all. Psalms 148, verse 14. Y'all make sure y'all write that classic down. All right. So let's jump back in. Let's get um who is that? First Sam. Let's get Luke 12. Once again, Israel, not in no big rush, so. You start getting sleepy. Pause it, wake up, and then finish it. Luke, uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Luke chapter 12, verse 35. 
Remember the whole lesson is what? Keep your lamps lit. This all goes into that. This all plays a big part in keeping your lamps lit in these last days. Not falling out of this truth. Um, exalting your household. Exalting your wife, your children, the brothers around you. And everything else, man. You know, exalting yourself. You know, you have to, you have, to have self-examination too. You know, because, hey... <laughs> If you can't if you can't do good for yourself, you can't do good for nobody else. Right? I pulled that already, but I'm, I'm gonna bring it out again. This is the book of Luke, chapter 12 and verse 35. It says, Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. So I pulled that already, but through the spirit, the most I had me to pull it again. Right? So what is that? That's preparation. Right? Keeping your loins girded. Prepares you for war. And, and what? And it says, and keep your lights burning. This is a this is a command. This is a red letter. Right? So let's go to Psalms chapter 62. Esau, Esau out there keeping up noise. Slow down, Esau. All right. I told you, man, I'm like Job. I live around dragons. That's crazy, man. But the most I push you away, you won't check. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 62 and verse 10. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Right? So yeah, don't trust so much in your money and and you know and because the same money you chase is the same thing the oppress the same thing that's oppressing you. Right? It's being issued to you by the so called white man, right? So don't put your heart so much on, 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 on things of the earth, man. Put your mind towards the kingdom. That's one of the main things in keeping your candle lit. A lot of times, once we start focusing on things of the earth, the money, um, ex exalting ourselves to be looked at as kings and, and princes to people of the world, um, by you know that in turn takes you away from the direction that you headed, which is where you was headed, which was to the kingdom. You know? You're not coming to camp because you gotta you wanna work extra hours or whatever the case may be. Look, that ain't gonna get it. You don't you don't um you don't gather your your career, you know, or, or gather your career around well gather God around your career. You gather your career around your house. You understand now if you can't help it and there's nothing you can do at this time then the most I got mercy. But at the end of the day, you don't know how much mercy you do have. So that should be something that you constantly working with your boss. Like, look, is there something else I can do? Can I work an extra two or three hours throughout the week to make up that day? Or whatever the case may be. Now, if you can't, then that's a whole other situation. Right? And, and, you know, brothers ain't going to put that kind of pressure on you. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, once you once you start depending and you start um, um, depending on your oppressor, you start depending depending on the, the things of the earth. That's what entails takes you away or takes the spirit to keep these commandments right and to stay in this truth. It, it just does that, you know. I read it again. It says the righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in Him. So how do you trust in Him by keeping His commandments? By keeping his feast days. Because you're because in your mind you're thinking, look, if I do what the Lord said, then things would go right with me. Pursuant to the book of Deuteronomy, uh chapter uh, the, the tenth chapter. Right? It says, And shall trust in him, and all the upright in his heart shall in his mind shall glory, shall glory. Right? You got that? So let's get the book of Haggai. Chapter 1 and verse 5. 
plastic right here, y'all. Book of Haggai, chapter 1 and verse 5, right? Because we got to stay on the path, man. You know what I mean? That's really what this lesson really is going into. Stand on the path of righteousness. Keeping your candles lit. Keeping your fire burning. Being that lion, that fiery lion of Judah, right? Being that ravenous pack of wolves of, of, of the tribe of Benjamin, right? Being that hard-nosed, hard-nosed, hard-headed rhino, right? Right? And and being that strong um, donkey of the, of the tribe of Issachar and whatever your respective tribe is, right? Being being um, the essence of it, man. It's what it's all about. We in this thing for the long haul, Israel, we got to continue to stay focused, man. Right? It's the book of Haggai, chapter 1 and verse 5. It says, Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of armies, consider your ways. Now, do what? Consider your ways, right? So, reflect on yourself. And see if the, if the way you've been going, is it leading me to the kingdom? Or is it leading me further away from the kingdom? Right, and my, and, you know, cause I can be honest. Sometimes I look on my YouTube, I can't find no videos because I've been watching everything else. So in these times, you have to consider your ways. You have to say, well, hold up, why is my algorithm looking like this? Cause normally, when I click on my YouTube, it's a thousand different videos, camps, breakdowns, or whatever the case may be, or uh, as an exhortation of my brothers of the service. Whatever the case may be, when they take their little time to do an exhortation video, these are things that's normally there. But hey, what happens? When you start watching so much things that's not in this truth, you risk and you run the risk of losing your spirit and falling out of this truth. Because let me tell you, the things of the world is easy to attain. It's easy. It's easy to be wicked. But we we are running for that incorruptible crown. Not not something like gold or paper that that, that the moth or the flames could burn or destroy. The thing that we the thing that we're headed to is indestructible. This crown can't be destroyed by the moths and the fire and the flame and man and flooding. Right? So we have to make sure that we're doing what? We're considering our ways. Because check this out, verse 6. Because it says, Ye have sown much and bring in little. It says, Ye eat, but ye have yet, but you don't have enough. Ye drink, but you are not filled with drink. Your clothes, your clothes, it says, Ye clothe yourself, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. Right, so you gotta consider what you, cause you waste you you're wasting your time anyway. So you want to consider your ways, and you want to bend your mind towards the Lord, and not on putting your money in a bag of holes. What's that bag of holes? That's taxing, child support, whatever whatever your issue is. That's where your money is going to a wicked E or anybody else. Con. All right, so let's get, um, we're going to start winding down, Israel. Let's get Revelation chapter 14 and verse 4. This is a parable in, in the book of Revelations, man. Yeah, it's where you putting your money into a bag with holes, man. Your mind focused on how much money and what you can earn in this world. Now, is that saying that you can't enjoy yourself and have nice things? Then the most I said, don't deny yourself of the of, 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 of the good thing. But when you start, but when that's on the only thing on your mind, you're not, you know, you're not studying. You are watching, uh, uh, uh some Negro or some Edomite trying to tell you how to better your life and, and investment opportunities and all that, 
Where's your time for the most high? You barely can walk and chew bubble gum at the same damn time, but now you want to invest over here, but then you want to read the scriptures over. You, you, you don't even know what's going on. Right? This is the book of Revelation chapter 14, and I'll start at verse 4. It says, These are they which were not defiled with women. For they are virgins. Now, in this context, the virgins mean those that are those that were not those that were rooted in the law, statutes, and commandments. So those are the virgins, right? Verse four. I'll start again. These are they which were not defiled with women. Now, the women, the women is the uh, these. What's the best way to put it? Um, the ways of the earth. The doctrines of the earth, right? The new wine, the wickedness of the earth. These are the ones that were not defiled by the ways of the world, right? And we and was rooted in keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, because that's what you want to be in this last day. You want to be, you want to be found rooted, right? Rooted in keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. Rooted in keeping this truth, right? Knowing what the love of the Lord is, pursuant to the book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 3. Or in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 13, which tells you what you need to be doing in these last days, regardless of everything else. These are they which were not defiled with women, right? They were virgins because they were rooted in what? Rooted in Yahushua. These are they which follow the Lamb. Now, who's the Lamb? Yahweh Shai, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men. So what does it mean to be redeemed? To be redeemed means to be purchased. Right? So these are the, uh, or these were the ones that was rooted in Yahweh Shai was purchased from among men. Being the first fruits unto Yahweh and to the Lamb. So who is the first fruits? Those that's your elect, your hundred and forty-four thousand, right? The one third, right? The ones that was keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. They was rooted in Hamashiach Yahushua, right? Those are the ones that's going to be redeemed. They're going to be purchased back because we were sold into slavery, right? But Yahweh is going to redeem us back. He's going to purchase us back. Okay. So what does the Most High require? What is he saying? What is he saying by saying all of this? He's saying that he wants to find you keeping the law, statutes, and commandments when he returns. Keeping your candles lit. It's all going to always go back to keeping your candles lit. That's all it is, right? Now let's get these last couple of uh, precepts. Let's get Colossians chapter 4 and verse 1. Get the book of Colossians, chapter 4 and verse 1. So do I know where the precept at sometimes? Alright. Colossians 4, 4 and 5. 4 and 1. Let's we'll start at 1. Everybody got to say come. So this is the book of Colossians, chapter 4 and verse 1. It reads, Masters, give unto your servants, no pun intended, that which that which is just and equal, right? Knowing that ye also have a master in heaven, right? So yeah, so the people that the people that's um you know that you're teaching or your your wife, your children, right? The scriptures say, and we will be masters, we will one we will be the ones that know the scriptures and you know basically 
know and have the understanding to a certain degree because we do we do teach in part, right? We don't know the full spectrum until Hamashiach Yahweh shall come and makes everything clear to us in these last days. But we do teach and we do teach in part, right? Um, masters, give unto your servants that which is just. So give them just means good and equal. Knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. So it's, it's, it, you, that's how you walk. You treat you treat your, your church. You treat the people of your church the same way you would want who? Yeah, how would it treat you, right? Continue in prayer. What? Continue in prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving, right? So that's how you keep your candles lit. Stay con stay constant in prayer, man. Continue in prayer, right? It says, verse 3, with all praying also for us, that Yahweh will open up unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Yahweh Shai, for which I am also in bonds. Because Paul, he's, Paul, he's saying, look, I, I, I'm in bonds to Yahweh Shai the same as y'all. Right? Verse 4. That I may make it manifest and I ought to speak. Verse 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. So that's what we got to do, Israel, in these last days, man. We have to walk in wisdom to those that's without. You know, to those that don't know this, that don't know this truth, that don't understand how to keep the commandments right. Um, you know, we got to get out here on the highways and hedges. Um, we have to be patient there, too. With uh, our, a lot of our family too, right? Even though we know what's going on, we got to be patient to a certain degree, to a certain fault, right? Um, you know, you can't, you know, you, you know, uh, you can't walk past the homeless all the time, man. You know, you gotta, you gotta give them that wisdom. If you know it, you know that's just that's like how the, the scriptures speak about uh, putting your light un, under the bed. You the only person that can see it. Can't nobody else see that light, right? Dressing in your modest apparel, wearing your fringes, right? Put your oils, all these different things. Talking, walking in righteousness, speaking to speaking to people, and um, and you know having a having a sense of uh, ha having a sense of rulership when you speak to people. People will respect you more, right? So it says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time and watch. You have to redeem the time every day. Like, man, all this is going on. We must be this at this part in the Bible. Or it seems like we're getting close to this part. Or we or we may be going to this part, this prophecy. Right? So you're redeeming the time every day. And all the time that the most I give you, you're using that time wisely to study, to stay focused so that you can make your election sure. That's what it's all about. It's all about, it ain't about what you can do now. It's about striving. You're supposed to strive in these last days. Verse 6, it says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Right? Kind. So with that, what we're going to give, so with that, we're going to give all praise, honor, and glory. To the most high God, in the name of his only begotten son, who the word ignorantly called Jesus the Christ. I'm Brother Lamont of the Servants Assembly, right? And if you learn anything from this lesson, I've done my job. A little short-handed uh, 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 this Shabbat, but my brother Gabor, he'll, he'll, he'll be uh, back with me shortly, right? Um, and yeah, keep your keep your keep your candles lit. You know, don't let don't let the wiles of the world um stop you from achieving the goal you know that that we all are aiming for man and, and that's that's to be elected to be to be beamed up in these last days man and we and and, and look we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be looked at as a, as a fool to the world for your how your sake you know and always remember your how said if they persecuted me then they gonna definitely if they persecuted you, just know that they persecuted me first. Right? So once again with that, we're gonna give all praise, honor, and glory to the most high God, Yahweh Bahashim Mashiach Yahweh Shai. 
right? I am Brother Lamont of the Service Assembly, uh, Alabama. I'm going to say Shalom.